take a seat. We're going to get started. Thank you all for coming out on kind of a dreary day. Didn't start out like that, though. I thought it looked pretty nice this morning, but by the time I came to work, it was raining. So, but like I said, we got to start thinking rain and then start thinking snow. Oh. I'm sorry, but we've had a nice September. So we're so glad you are all here today. Uh, my name is Becky and I'm from Neo LaunchNet. I'm one of the three organizations that sponsors Phoebe. There's Neo LaunchNet, plus there's the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, and then there's also Glide, which is upstairs. So we're really glad that you're here today. We hope that you helped yourself to some coffee or tea, and that is sponsored each week from by Dunkin' Donuts. So if you're ever across the street on Abbey Road, or if you're at Cam's Corners, or if you're in Amherst, those Dunkin' Donuts are owned by the same gentleman who is so generous to give us the coffee and tea every week. So be sure to stop in and say hello. We've got a lot going on at the end. I'll give you some announcements because we've got some great upcoming events, and I bet you Lisa has some things she can share about the SBDC. So make sure you have a pen and paper. But we're really glad today to have Misty Aschenbach from Gray CPA Inc. And I think it's a great topic because when you, when you told me your topic about the differences between bookkeepers and data entry and CPAs and accountants, I thought, yeah, what is the difference? So she's going to come up and talk to us about that. So come on up. Good morning. I speak loud. So can everybody hear me OK? Anybody have a blower over their head where they can't hear me at this volume? Well, good morning. I'm Misty Ashenbach. I work for Gray CPA, Inc. We're a, a smaller size accounting firm located in Westlake, providing timely and responsive accounting and tax services to individuals and businesses. Um, our topic today, we're going to try and give you a little bit of insight and things to think of in terms of data entry, bookkeeper, accountant, CPA. What the heck is the difference? What does my business need? When do I need multiple of those items? Um, and then, this is pretty informal, so if you guys have questions, just raise your hand, speak up. I'm slightly hard of hearing, which is why I speak so loud, so if you could yell your question, that'd be great. <laughs> How many of you in here own your own business? Well, a lot of you. Fantastic. Um, can everybody put their hand back up for everyone that said that they own their own business? And leave your hand up if you do your own internal accounting. Okay, good. All right. That gives me a gauge there. All right. Um, a does not equal B. So while all roles are important, um, they're, they're not created equally. So when we're talking about the distinguished roles between data entry, bookkeeper, accountant, or a CPA, um, they're not equal. The roles that they're going to serve for an organization are very different, but each role is equally important. Okay, so we're not downplaying. I'm not saying, oh, that girl just does data entry. You need a CPA. No. Everybody serves their purpose within an organization. So every role is very, very important. Let's talk a little bit about data entry versus a bookkeeper. So we're kind of, if you think about adding layers onto a cake. Let's talk about data entry. When you first start up a small business, um, is Chris Corpus here this morning? I was going to pick on him and use him as an example. Um, so uh, Chris Corpus owns Corpus Law Inc. He has an office here. He's an attorney. He doesn't have a lot of data entry that needs to be tracked. He's not selling a gazillion widgets where he needs to track all of his supply costs and things like that. So data entry is, is just what it sounds like. You're taking information, putting it into some system, whether it be a check register, uh, it could be paper and pencil, it could be QuickBooks, um, some apps. Some people use apps on their phones to take pictures of receipts and uh, categorize an expense for that. It could be Peachtree, um, Mass90, um, a lot of the manufacturers may be familiar with that. Easy Fund is a system that nonprofits use to track stuff. Chainsync, that's for our franchise owners. Clio um, is actually a new piece of software that Chris exposed me to that's a fantastic piece that integrates with QuickBooks for attorneys. So when I'm referring to system in this and how the information gets in there, that's what I'm talking about whether it's your paper and pencil or some computerized 
piece that takes your information in and can produce reports out. Um, keeping in mind with data entry, output is only as good as the input. So if you're just tracking your information, what you get out of it is only as good as what you're going to put into it. So keep that in mind if you're still doing paper and pencil. Um, I actually have a client with a service shop who still uses that three-fold check one-write system. Is anyone in here old enough to know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay. You know what? It works for him. He knows what comes in and what goes out of that, and he's got it categorized, and it works for him. Some people might view that as archaic, and you can't run instantaneous reports off of that. Um, no, it, keep in mind, data entry at that level, there's no real check on the output. So even if it's put into a system, once they print a report for you, at that level, they, they don't have a check on the output. They may print a balance sheet that is completely incorrect, but they're not armed with the knowledge to know that it was wrong, okay? Then we're going to go up a notch. So we're going to take somebody with data entry and talk about a bookkeeper. A uh, bookkeeper is going to come with a little more knowledge. Sometimes we're self-titled, right? I could call myself a bookkeeper. I might, I might really be a hairstylist, you know. Um, they're going to input level of data, um, uh, the next level of data. They might have a one-year certificate. Um, LCCC actually has I believe it's a 12 to 18 month certificate program here where they have bookkeeping one, bookkeeping two, and they even have a payroll certification that you can kind of add on to that. That gives you a good working knowledge uh, within the classroom and some experience as well as using a system, uh, an automated system rather than paper and pencil. Um, so somebody coming out saying that they're a bookkeeper, they're going to come with some type of schooling uh, behind that as well as probably um, experience with some type of system. All right, so data entry, bookkeeper, now we're at accountant versus CPA. And this one I like to say, keep calm and fight together. So I don't know if you noticed that first picture, they were fighting over the bag of money, like who gets the job. Your accountant, your CPA, they should, they should work together. Okay, so keep calm and fight together, fight for the client. Uh, an accountant's going to come out, they probably have a two to four year degree, so you can get your associate's degree, you get your uh, four year bachelor's degree, so you've got somewhere between 60 to 120 hours of education under your belt. Doesn't say anything about experience. You can graduate college with an accounting degree and never had a hands-on experience. Uh, some accountants uh, with those degrees may come out and become what's called an enrolled agent where uh, they've taken a test with the IRS to prepare tax returns. So they're certified with the IRS for whatever that might count for. Um, but accountants don't really have a watchdog. So you have this new graduate coming out of school. They say they're an accountant. They say they're coming with experience. You're trusting them with your books. And if you, the business owner, don't have a working knowledge of financial information, you should have some, but you rely on that accountant to come in and do that job. So they don't have a watchdog to say, wait a minute, you're not doing this stuff right. You're not booking things properly. And then we talk about the CPA. So we're degreed. Um, we're coming out with 150 plus hours. The minimum to sit for the CPA exam is 150 hours. So that's basically a ba um, bachelor plus. You have to have experience. You have to have the three year work experience under your belt. You have to pass the national exam, become state licensed. All of that by default means that you have tax knowledge. And by tax knowledge, I mean you took a class and passed that portion of the exam. So you know a few things about individual taxes, business taxes. Um, we also have an ongoing education requirement of 120 hours every three years. You break that down, that's about 40 hours a year. Unless you're a procrastinator and you're jamming out 120 hours in December before your reporting period ends. Um, and th those hours include ethics. 
Uh, so some people who are in the insurance industry, some of the attorneys, you guys are subject to the ethics ongoing. Um, that's something that, that an accountant isn't subject to. Unless they're working for an accounting firm, they're not having ethics continually jammed down their throat. Um, things, things can become shady where they're doing things to benefit the client or make things appear better. Um, and, and there's nobody watching that. So who's watching us, the CPAs? Um, any firm that produces uh, financial statements, they're called attest services. Uh, so compilations, reviews, audits, financial statements, things like that, where the firm itself is subject to a peer review. That means, let's summarize it like this, the auditors auditing the auditors, okay? So while at my firm we don't actually audit, um, it is a peer of ours coming in, looking at our systems, our quality control, our work papers, our engagement letters, the CYA letters that you have to have your clients sign, um, making sure that our work is good quality and there's no material misstatements. Like we're not giving a client of Lisa some bad financial statements to give a bank and the bank gives them a loan and they fold because they relied on our information. So we're being watchdogged. So we kind of talked about those. Um, so does that distinguish a little bit so far about some of the background from data entry, bookkeeper, accountant, and CPA? So your question still is, well, what do I need? Any question that any, a few of you uh, have spoken to me before, anything that you ever ask me about accounting or taxes, my answer will always be the same. It depends. There's no blanket answer on any of this, okay? So you got to know the big picture. So something that you need to consider when you're trying to figure out what you need in your organization, um, you want to take a look at your business. Are you small, medium, large? What type of volume do you have? Um, are you a one-man attorney? Are you a mass producer of widgets? Okay, you're going to need a lot of support in your system. Look at your abilities. Can you do it? Can you do data entry? Can you record your income and your expenses fairly well? Do you want someone else to do that? Can you read the reports that you're producing to make a management decision? <laughs> you may be extremely knowledgeable in producing widgets, but not understand the financial piece. So you need a stronger partner on your team at that time. Look at your system. Uh, this goes back to the method in which we're tracking our information, right? Paper, pencil, or some type of app or system, uh, computerized. Look at your resources. Who are the members of your team, your family, your friends? Who do you want to know your information? Your, um, your sister may be a qualified accountant. You don't want her touching your stuff. Okay? You don't want her to know that you're not making money or that you're making a ton of it. You need to consider requirements. Uh, so when I talk about that, Andy, you might be able to speak to this. Um, Andy sells at Lakeshore Wholesale. Lakeshore Auto. I, Lakeshore Auto. That's right. So they sell cars over there. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you guys didn't pay cash for all those cars and that you probably got a loan to hold your inventory. Yeah. So you may have loan covenants in which the bank gives you specific guidelines about other debt that you can get into. Um, or you may even have a line of credit where the bank says, periodically, I want to review your financial statements, and I need to make sure that you're not, in, um, you're not in default of any of these terms that we agreed on when I said that I'd finance your inventory for you. Um, well, who can make sure that you're not non-compliant? Okay, so you know, can a data entry person understand oh, we're too extended on our debt right now or the bank needs these reports and what I gave them is accurate. Again, if you fall into circumstance where you have something like that, you're going to need a stronger person on your team. You've got to look at your budget. What can you afford? Um, there's, let's see, I recently worked with someone who needs to hire a new not sure if it's data entry bookkeeper, accountant, or CPA on their team. And we looked at it 
like you do when you're buying a house, okay? Three columns, envision a piece of paper and draw three columns on there. What must I have? What must this person be able to do? Maybe it's enter invoices and mail them to people, track my receivables, um, enter my deposits, write my checks. All right, some basic type of entry information. What do they absolutely have to do? Define that. What do you want them to do? So maybe there's a next layer that you're looking for. Maybe you have a data entry, and that's not going anywhere because they can't analyze the reports that they're producing. So maybe you have a want column, and then maybe you have a dream column where that person also knows how to handle all the sales tax and payroll and um, can do tax planning for you. Maybe you have a dream, the dream column, right? That all ties back to your budget. Okay, now you have a sense of what you would like to see, what's required, and then you gotta look at what can I actually afford. Right, the market's gonna tell you. Yes, ma'am. I just wanna say, sometimes if you are a business that can afford to offset the increase. Right, there becomes a level of your business volume that you can't not afford it. Because the opportunity cost is too big. It, it's, it gets too extreme. Like she said, don't waste your time doing that. Waste the time, don't waste, I'm sorry. Okay. Use your time doing the things that you do that someone else can't do in your organization. Does that make sense what I'm saying here is every answer is it depends, but these are some considerations, some things that you as the business owner need to look at to help you formulate what level um, you might need at this time. Uh, just to kind of a recap of some of the basics there is, of course, I'm jaded. I feel like any growing enterprise, new or growing enterprise, can benefit from working with a CPA. That's honestly not the jaded person in me. That is a fact. You can benefit from working with a CPA. But it doesn't mean a CPA needs to be there every week doing some type of routine task for you, right? How do you want to use them? What do you want to get from them? Who can do that day-to-day -day data entry and the other tasks there? Um, what other considerations, those things that we just talked about, are appropriate for your business? And think of, as I mentioned earlier, one big layered cake. Your data entry provides information to the bookkeeper who provides information maybe to an external accountant who coordinates with an outside CPA. It's layers of a beautiful cake. That's why it, when I mentioned each role is equally important. Everybody relies on what they're being given to be good and someone to be able to answer that. And then the next layer takes it to the next level. I'm going to go through a couple of examples. Does anyone have any questions right now? Okay. Let's talk about an example that your business purchases a new piece of equipment. Let's break down. What do you need in your business? Who's doing data entry, bookkeeping, accountant, or CPA functions for you? You bought a piece of equipment. Fantastic. That means you had some money somewhere or financed it. So data entry is going to come in. They're going to notate in some capacity that you bought a piece of equipment. They may enter the payments toward that equipment into some system for you. That's about the end of data entry. A bookkeeper, next level, knows where that needs to go, for the most part, on your balance sheet. And they probably understand how to enter some depreciation You know, the, um, as the value loses, disintegrates over time. Um, based off of something that they were given. An accountant is going to have a deeper knowledge of that. They're going to understand the difference between capital leases and operating leases. They're going to be asking questions of the CPA, um, and they would know how to calculate depreciation, so they don't need somebody to give it to them. They probably know how to complete all of those functions. Um, and then you talk with their CPA, and they're going to look at the big picture. So they're going to say, you bought a piece of equipment, that's great. And your question might be, what's the depreciation entry that I need to give my internal bookkeeper? Well, it depends. We've got to look at the big picture. Are you making a bunch of money this year? That's fantastic. Maybe for tax reasons, we want to write that off in an accelerated capacity. We want to take some bonus depreciation, write half of that off. We want to use Section 179. We want to take all of it off right now. 
Why? Because we want to drive your, your taxable income down, keep your tax bill lower. The flip side of that might be that you're experiencing significant loss uh, for some change in the economy or the nature of your business or maybe you're in the first few years of startup. And maybe we don't need to do that. So we're going to evaluate you know, what's best for the long term. The next two years are expecting much higher profits. Let's take that asset and write it off over the usual course of time, a little bit each year. So you see how the layers kind of build on one another and each one will provide your organization a different piece of insight. I'm gonna do another example about paying your workers. Uh, data entry, they're gonna cut the check or potentially call in or go online and type in somebody's hours for your employees. Bookkeeper can do those same things, but they probably have some payroll preparation knowledge. So they're actually able to evaluate the payroll reports that you get um, and make sure that things seem right. They, they have a, an additional understanding and they also understand 1099s, which is when you have independent contractors. An accountant is gonna have a better understanding we're going to deepen that and we're going to talk about pre-tax, post-tax, payroll filings, tax deposits. Um, again, understanding those 1099s, who needs to get them, how do you provide the information, how do you spot check that they didn't give you a bad social security number. Um, and then they can like review expense reports from your employees and, and make sure that they're valid, the information's there and that they're getting reimbursed. And then comes the CPA and they're looking at things a little different again. They're talking about, do you actually have an employee? Do you have an independent contractor? What agreements do you have in place? And will it hold up if the IRS wants to um, disagree about their status? Help you determine how much you're gonna pay somebody, your salary determination. Talking about retirement options, retirement plans. Um, do you gonna have a SEP, a simple, a 401k, a 403b? Um, issuing 1099s. Um, and, and just being a resource of referrals for that type of processing. So nobody thought that paying your workers was like that involved, right? You just cut them a check. It's not. Um, it, your, your CPA is going to be a resource for, for that processing. They know a lot of payroll providers who's doing a good job uh, that meets your needs. Benefits administration, if you're in that pre-tax, post-tax, you know, how do I, how do I handle these benefits? Um, and they can assist with audits from any of the payroll agencies uh, or address any notices that you may receive. So again, each one plays a very integral part um, in your business. Each one brings a little added layer and a little insight. So your brand new business, you don't have any employees, you might not need all of the layers of the cake just yet, all right? But you, you can start to see kind of where you start to question, what is going on in my organization? What do I need at the moment? Resources, um, where, so where do you find the layers of the cake that I keep talking about? I really like cake, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> where, where do you find those people? Okay, so we can, once we know what we have to have, what we want and what we dream of, and what our budget is for that, we can place an ad on Indeed, right? Monster.com, Cleveland Local, um, you come up here to uh, LCCC, they have a whole career center. For any, anyone who needs new employees and has not visited the career center, you should definitely do that. Um, they have a whole career link. That's how I landed my job 14 years ago at Bob Gray's place. So a big believer in it. We've hired people out of there, out of that program. It's been a good resource for us. Um, you can also look at recent graduate programs. So if you're in a technical site in manufacturing or something, again, LC can be a good resource. But other uh, universities and programs uh, that are spitting out these recent grads with these skills that you need, go and talk to them. They can put you in front of people who are looking for these jobs. Um, you're, if you're trying to find a CPA, I'll be honest, most of that is gonna come from referral. Um, it, people don't place an ad for uh, CPA, some people do, sorry. In industry, Ford Motor Company needs a CPA controller uh, for some division, they may place an ad, a little different. 
the nature of I'm talking about where we're working with the small businesses, that's, it's coming from word of mouth. Uh, some people will go to their local chamber to find out, hey, who, um, I'm, I need a CPA in this area, can you recommend somebody? The AICPA and the OSCPA, which is the Ohio Society of CPAs, those are great resources as well. And also, if you did meet with a CPA and you just want to make sure they hadn't been regulatorily slammed before, that's public information. You can go type in their name at the Ohio Society and make sure that they weren't disbarred or in trouble for um, filing fraudulent returns, running off with somebody's payroll withholdings, things like that. So let me get some feedback. What do you guys think of when you hear the word CPA? Be honest. So we hear expensive, Very boring, meetings. boring meetings, tedious, tedious work. Like, right? Why do they do what they do? Necessary evil. Necessary evil. Oh, yeah. Wonderful, smart. oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but no, no. So this is good feedback for me. So. So your CPAs are not breaking the stereotypes yet. Okay, that's good to know. Um, let's see, for me, uh, I just clarified what my father had told me as I was growing up. I was a certified pain in the ass. <laughs> that's what I think of when I hear CPA. And it's true. So somebody said the necessary evil, it is our job to kind of be that pain in our client's rear and keep them on track as much as they'll allow us to. Um, sometimes being too invasive does get expensive, to your point. Um, but it depends on that client's need, that budget, what they've looked at. What do you need? What do you value? What do you want to get out of a relationship with your data entry, bookkeeper, accountant, or CPA? And, there, and of course there's price differences on that. Um, if anybody wants to, can you tell me who in here works with an outside tax preparer? So everybody in this room does their own taxes, or you didn't want to tell me, okay. Um, and does anyone work with a CPA firm? A couple, okay. Okay, so some people have had some experience with that. Um, but the reason I ask those questions is if any of you would care to, can you tell me what you value or what you see and what they bring to the table? Uh, those are two really great stories about um, what they're doing in their organization and how they're working with their external sources. So the layers of the cake, you guys have fabulous cakes going on right now. Um, I do want to mention, though, that A does not equal B again. Okay, all CPAs as individuals and firms are not created equally. Please note that each one is equally important. Okay, they all serve a role, but they're not all the same. These two stories sound fantastic. You guys have great working relationships. You're getting more than expected out of your visits with your CPAs. Um, sometimes that's how we get new clients is people who are unsatisfied. They're not doing their job. They're not that beautiful icing on the cake. They're simply an accelerated accountant or just being viewed as a tax preparer. That should not be how that relationship is. If you have a relationship like that, you need to ask that person, why is our relationship like this? And try and fix it. Because they're not serving you in their best capacity, especially at their rates, if they're not that beautiful icing on the cake for you, giving you that peace of mind and actually being excited about talking to the accountant. So could everyone hear how she was explaining that they, they didn't utilize the layers, they were in financial distress, they were trying to cut corners, so they took some of those top layers off of that cake, tried to keep things, we'll do it ourselves, we need to save money everywhere possible, and they were trying to do the right thing, but at the, at the wrong cost, uh, which ultimately cost them a lot of money and their business. Um, so sometimes you got to pick your poisons. and and. And honestly, my experience between our firm and many other firms that I talk to, our goal is to help our clients. 
if you are in an extreme circumstance and we need a five hour powwow to make a plan, a strategic plan to help get you out of this, and that bill might be expensive, we might discount it, we might figure out a payment arrangement. You need to get in there because you going out of business is far more expensive to us too. We don't wanna lose our clients. We don't wanna see people lose their jobs. We don't see people lose their business. Um, so if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're trying to cut costs, talk with the CPA about that. All right, that's a great starting point. Uh, so uh, CPA firms, who do we serve? The public, a variety of industry. Uh, some people might choose uh, CPAs, accountants, they choose to work within an industry. I mentioned you know, Ford Motor Company. Um, we, we, as external CPAs, also work with the internal accountants uh, in a variety of industries. Um, specific ones that we serve range from manufacturing to estates and everything in between there. My personal passion, I l really enjoy working with optometrists and veterinarians who are fresh out of school because they're a startup. They are degreed, they're a doctor now, and they are buying a business or working for someone else as an independent contractor, which in essence is their own business, and they don't know what they don't know. They're fantastic doctors. They don't know anything about the stuff that I know, and I love to just get in there and start from the ground and build them, connect them to those resources that they need in between. So I have a strong passion specifically for those. Me as an individual, as I said, we're all different. Uh, some firms or accountants will specialize in a specific industry. Um, so there are actually CPA practices that only work with veterinarians, for example. That's not what we do. We like our variety. We like helping so many people that we can't limit that to a niche focus. But again, so the differences in the firms that you're looking for, they're not all created equally. Where's their passion? What are their beliefs? Those are questions at the interview. Um, Again, not all created equally at our firm. How do we serve? So we talked about who we serve and how do we serve them. You see that word bookkeeping up there again. Wait a minute, the CPA firm does bookkeeping? I'm confused. Yes, we do. Not everyone on our staff are licensed CPAs. We have bookkeepers and accountants on our team. And if your budget doesn't fit what we need to charge you to complete some type of bookkeeping need that you have. We have resources. I have external small businesses, um, some, are, some are very local here, that I would, I would call and say, hey, you need to come and help my client. I don't get the revenue. Somebody else does. But it's a trusted relationship. They're doing a good job for my client. They're meeting their need. They're working within the budget that the client has so that I get good results to do the big picture, to throw the, the big pretty icing on the cake. That's fine, it, whatever works. I have the other extreme where we have clients that send us information weekly, monthly, quarterly, interim periods as needed. It works for their budget. They might have an in-house person, but they want it looked at outside of there. Maybe there's a constant tax planning, a constant bonus program that's going on. They want a lot of review. They want a lot of understanding. Uh, they want to make sure their price points are right. Maybe they need statements, uh, financial statements in some capacity, help doing their sales and use tax, corporate taxes, tax planning. And I'm just kind of going to boogie. All right, this I find interesting. Again, not all firms or individuals are created equal. This is an example of any day-to-day -day of my day. What, what does a client call me for? So uh, the reason I bring this up is for you guys. Thinking of data entry, bookkeeper, accountant, CPA, right? It can be any one of those people that possesses the quality to care enough that um, when you pick up the phone, you might call that person. Uh, maybe they're a good member of your team, a good resource for you. Um, we, I get phone calls daily about any one of these items. Human resources, marriage, divorce, <laughs> death. Those are in no particular order. <laughs> um, Social Security. They're calling their, their CPA and they're saying, should I file and suspend? Oh wait, did that get overruled? We can't do that anymore. Um, talking about a change in their finances. 
fraud prevention, um, buying or selling a business, pricing their items, uh, I've told the story before about the elderly woman who called me and said, who do I call for pest control? Okay. <laughs> well, she called me because we're their trusted advisor. She, she knew that she could trust my opinion on who she should call. There's no need to get out the, the phone book. You know, I'll call Miss Day. She'll have an answer. So when you guys are looking at what your business needs. I want you to consider a lot of these things that we talked about. What do you have going on within the organization? What do you want to get out of that person? Do they possess the skills to do it? Can you afford it? Maybe you need to break it up into some layers and make sure those layers all work together and that they, they fight together. And that's all that I have at the moment. Does anyone have more questions? I got two for you. Yes, sir. That's right. So again, a good trusted advisor and CPA firm, if they're seeing these opportunities of things that you don't know, they're seeing some room for improvement, maybe quarterly we should be doing this. They should be communicating that with you and expressing, of course, the associated costs that would be involved in that. So they're offering some extra services. They're making sure that you understand there's other things that they could do that add value to you and about what that's going to cost. Um, but how do you know if they're not doing that? Talk to your peers. Talk to another CPA. It doesn't mean you're interviewing them to potentially move. Maybe you know each other in some other capacity. Like, Ryan, you know me. You want to approach me after this, and you want to say, I'm working with somebody, and, he, and here's what we do, and, and is there, do you hear anything from the outside that I should be doing differently, or does this sound right? That, that's fine. Um, so use your resources, ask around, see what other people are doing. The only time that doesn't work is to ask, how much did you get back on your taxes this year? Don't have those cocktail party conversations because that's nonsense. That's apples and oranges. I only ask because in our industry, we deal with many different clients, almost all of them. What should we do at the end of this day? Sure. So, um, Ryan's question is on a basic level, an individual return, not a lot of complexity to it, okay? Maybe you itemize some deductions, that's about it. You're probably an employee somewhere, you don't have a lot of stuff going on, not a lot of complexity. What's a reasonable expectation? Do you need a CPA for something like that? And how often should you be in touch with them? So I would start by saying, it depends. <laughs> yeah, you guys were listening. It does depend because what do you got to do? You got to go back to your consideration factors, okay? What do you want? What are your future endeavors looking like? Um, are you potentially going to want to start a business? Uh, did, you know, who's doing it now? Like, what, do you have some underlying need or some relationship that you want to start building now? If you don't and you're a 23-year-old kid fresh out of college, you're an employee and nothing's difficult, you don't you should do it yourself honestly because you should understand what goes into a tax return of course um, or you might go to a preparer um, an enrolled agent um, somebody who's eligible to file tax returns um, the fees are going to be significantly less but the growth opportunity the outside the box thinking, the extra mile that somebody might be willing to go for you when you were that college kid who was an employee and now all of a sudden you got a job offer over at Western Southern and they're making you an independent contractor and now you, you own your own business. Well, now, who, now who's on your team? Now are you out shopping or do you stay loyal to the preparer that you've got? Um, so a lot of different things are gonna play into that. The simple person that you were referring to, how often should they be meeting with that person? Honestly, that's probably once a year. Unless there was something, some change of events. You, if you ever have a change in events, change in your income, expenses, um, a death, a, a marriage, a child, any of that, you should reach out. Reach out to whoever that person is, whether it's the preparer, the enrolled agent, your CPA firm, um, whatnot. They need to be apprised of that because that can significantly change your circumstances. Bonuses. Your employer rock your world and give you an awesome bonus? Call your accountant. 
call your tax preparer. Make sure you had the right amount of withholdings taken. Because if you didn't, you might want to set some aside um, so that it's not spent. Um, that's harder to do if it was a Christmas bonus, because that is light at the end of the year, but at least you could know what you're getting into at tax time. You'll know ahead of time, they didn't withhold enough taxes, I'm gonna owe something. Um, other people, how often they should be reaching out to their CPA, even with a great relationship, you don't know what you know. It should be more than once a year. It shouldn't be that, that relationship where it's just at tax time. There's multiple key points and everyone's situation is a little bit different. Uh, when you own a business, there should be some key times, six months, nine months, and then of course at tax time when that year end is over. Six months opens dialogue, an opportunity to say, here's where this year is going, here's where I project the second half of the year. Nine months is a great time to say, how, how have we done since then? Are we on track for those year end projections and what's the tax consequence going to be? Let's do some planning for that. And then, of course, year-end, that's compliance work. Your year-end is over where you have to close your books, you have to compliantly produce a financial statement, a tax return, and, and go from there. Does that answer those questions? Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Yes, sir. How important is it for an Sure. So you can buy QuickBooks from Costco, Sam's Club. What, it's like 189 bucks. super cheap. And you can let them give you, when you set it, you can use a setup wizard and let it give you a chart of accounts. That might work for your business, and that's why the answer depends, okay? It's not as useful. If you work with someone who's familiar with that and you set it up maybe with an account code system where you can group personnel costs together or group your cost of goods together because that's important to the nature of your business, that is gonna, the output is going to be way more beneficial to you um, if it's done right. That's fantastic. I encourage clients of mine to take a class on it. I we do training. Somebody said over here, Frank. I think it was you. You guys are expensive, right? So yeah, it gets costly. You want to spend eight hours with me? Um, it does get expensive, and that might not be the best for the case at hand. So we find other resources. There's a class at the SBDC. There might be a free one. There might be a, a low fee one. There might be a class that you're sending your recent college graduate daughter to because that's not her expertise, but she's real smart and she's going to do it. Setting it up right to begin with will save you money. It will earn you more money because your output is going to be more meaningful. Yes. So you should probably see Lisa. That's a good stop. Do you know Lisa Hudson right here? Okay. That's a great stop for you because Lisa knows everyone in Lorain County. So she can give you some recommendations on where to go from here. Go talk to a professional. Absolutely. That initial half hour to an hour, depending where it goes, even when you just have a thought that you might do something, you're going to leave there with so much information, and you're going to get a feel for whether you like that person that you talked to or not, so that you know when I get closer, two years down the road. This has been a work, you know, this has been a work in the making, right? Two years later, uh, you're about ready, or you're getting closer to being ready. Now you want to go revisit that person, or you didn't like them at all, and so in the meantime, you're kind of shopping around for somebody who's respected, somebody that's knowledgeable, and somebody that you like. Um, so don't wait until you start a business. And a, a lot of times, if you need funding and stuff, um, which a lot of people do to start their business, it, you, you need it to see that CPA already. Um, because they're going to help you get through that, that lending process. The lender's going to ask for projections and stuff that you may or may not have uh, without help. 